Good morning. Welcome everyone on this Rally Day Sunday. We're so happy to have uh, so many of you here at our 8 o'clock service. Of course, then we'll worship again at 10. You don't have to come back if you don't want to, but we're back to our 8 and 10 o'clock services. Pastor Nissa, you can come back. Well, it depends upon your sermon. We're going to take a vote afterwards and then, no. <laughs> but welcome, everybody. Great to have you. I see some children with their backpacks. We'll have the blessing of the backpacks just a little bit later. And Sunday school also begins today. Uh, we'll gather between services. We won't be in our classrooms today. We'll all meet in here together uh, to meet the teachers and uh, have some music and, such, and so forth. And then we'll uh, go with... Uh, uh, parents. A parent is uh, hopefully will be with each child. And we have all kinds of activities in the parking lot and in the yard. Uh, donuts for the Sunday school kids and parents. We hope you have a great morning between services. But we'll start in here at 9.05. Let us worship the Lord now with hope and joy. Uh, printed on your screen or bulletin is the confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand. We worship as we live our lives in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of all of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another in this moment of silence. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. And so as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I do declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn, three verses of Earth and All Stars. It's going to be hymn number 731, verse 1, 3, and 4. Earth and all stars. Congregation may be seated. If you would please, 
Um, if you have your cell phone with you, could you turn it completely off? I have a feeling we're having some difficulties with the uh, spirits that be in the air of technology this morning. And so for some reason, we are not connecting with the TVs and the laptop very well. So if you would do that, that does help. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you who take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. And together let us pray our prayer of the day. Gracious God, throughout the ages you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make, make us, us a, a people, people ready to proclaim your promises to the, world. to the whole world. Through, Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our healer and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite the kids to come up for the kids' message. Bring your backpacks if you have them. If you didn't, that's okay. Come on up anyway. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me. everybody. We have so many kids now that there's not even room on the steps. So come on and have a seat on the floor if you can't find a spot that works for you. It is so exciting to see all of you kids today. And a lot of you I see brought your backpacks with you. So I am so excited because I want you guys to remember that God goes with you everywhere that you go, at school and at sports and at home. So I have some things that I thought would be really cool if you guys could take with in your backpacks to remind you of how much God loves you and how God goes with you. 
okay? So I was thinking that one of the things you could put in your backpack would be our hymnal to remind you of when we come to church and how we sing. Here, Haley, can you hold on to that? Do you think that would be a great thing to bring to, to kindergarten with you? And then I thought, um, maybe you could also bring a Bible. So we have, oh, look at this one. Look at this big fancy Bible. Look at all the, like, the gold shiny pages that something like really fancy like this would be an awesome way to remember um, how much um, God loves you. Here, can you, do you think that would fit in your backpack? You could bring that one maybe. And then I thought, we need something to remember Jesus. And what better, better way to remember Jesus than a cross? So I think having a cross with you would be a really awesome way to remember that God goes with you. Could you think that would go in your backpack? Can you, we'll just put that right there. Do you think that would fit in your backpack? Yeah, yeah. So then you can remember that Jesus goes with you and Jesus loves you. And then I thought you need to remember the Holy Spirit too. And this one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit is a dove. And I have this really cool dove that lives in my office. And I thought maybe... This would be something you could bring with in your backpack to remember the Holy Spirit. So here, I, grab that for me. And then I also figured maybe we, I want you to remember to pray. And one thing we do a lot when we pray is light candles. And maybe you could put a candle to bring to school. I'm, I'm just kidding. We'll make this clear. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, So I thought maybe this candle could remind you of how uh, we pray. Can you you grab that? that? I'm sure your kindergarten teacher would love that. All right. What do you think? Do you think that if you put those things in your backpack, it would help you remember that God loves you? It might. Do those things fit in your backpack? No. Are those things good things to bring to school? No, they're too big or they're unsafe. Yeah, candles shouldn't be at school. And this is way too big, isn't it? It's, it's almost taller than you are when you're sitting down. <laughs> and this, the songs are great, but it's just too big, isn't it? Hmm, let's see. This might not have been Pastor Nissa's best idea, huh? Let's see. That's just too big. That's just too big. Let's see. I wonder if I can come up with something different that you can bring in your backpack to remember that God loves you and God goes with you when you go to school. Does anybody have any ideas? Yes, I do. A keychain. A chicken. A chicken. <laughs> A chicken. That that could work, but I do have keychains. So I'm going to give each of you a keychain to put on your backpack. There's a couple different patterns here, but they have words and pictures to remind us of how much God loves us. So I want you to take a keychain to remind you that God goes with you when you go to school. Even if you're not talking about God, even if you're not praying out loud, even if you're not in church, God is there and God loves you and God wants you to remember to be loving and to kind, be kind to others because of your faith. So... Um, Pastor Paul, will you help hand out some keychains? So we're going to give... I'm going to take the basket. Sure. All right. You can leave them in the wrapper for now, and when you get back to your mom's, dad's, or grandparents, you can take them off the wrapper and put them on your backpack. Okay? So take the color that you want here. If you don't have a backpack, that's okay. You can still grab one. one. Oh, there sorry, go. I'm flinging them accidentally there you over go. here. Let's grab one. They have different Bible verses on them and different oh, sayings. Sorry. You want one? Got one? All right. You already have one? Oh, okay. Who oh, else want one? needs one over here? Nora. All right. Did you get one? Here. I'm going to put some <laughs> on the floor. That might be an easier way to oh, chew Pastor some. Paul. What? Why are you the way you are? Here, Mila. Natalie wants one too. Okay. Everybody get one? Are there extras? Did you get one? Okay. So, um, I want you to pray with me. We're going to bless your backpack. So, if you want to put a, um, hold your keychain or grab your backpack if you've got it with you, <clears throat> and you're going to repeat after me. 
dear God, thank you for going with us at school, on the bus, at home, and everywhere. Bless our bags and us as we learn and grow. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm going to have you guys stay here for just a second because while you're all up here, we are also going to have our Sunday school teachers um, and helpers come up and they are going to, uh, we're going to bless them and to install them. Um, so how many of you are going to Sunday school after church today? Oh, look, most of you. Awesome. Um, even the ones who don't raise their hand don't necessarily real, remember that. All That's right. All. So if you're here this morning, three-year-old class will be Sydney Gilbert, Brooke Eppen, helpers Zaley Boyum and Danica Anderson. Come on up and stand in front of the kids. Four-year-olds, Kelly Niemeyer, Izzy Doherty, helper. Kindergarten, class one, Ingrid Forbes and Tim Peterson, helpers Addison Johnsrud and Bryn Tweeton. Kindergarten and first grade, Jessica Copeman and Allison Cox. Helpers, Kylie Sin and Madison Sogla. Second grade, Katie Novotny, Daisha Borst, Chris Ch Chafee. Helpers, Ashlyn Scheidel and Leah Halverson. Third grade, Nikki Lee and uh, Carrie Nace. Helpers, Avery Schumacher and Andrew Burhau. Fourth grade, Adia Evans and Hope Doherty. Fifth grade, Amy Goldsmith. Sixth grade, Megan Evans and Nikki DeBoer with helpers Calvin DeBoer and Aiden Johnson. So if I called your name, if you're at this service, come on up and stand in front of the kids. Look at all these nice teachers and helpers. Teachers and helpers, Jesus has commanded us to make disciples of all nations. When we teach and baptize, we are fulfilling that great commission that was given to us by Jesus. We have each been called to God's service. And so teachers and helpers, do you accept the responsibility to use your talents and gifts to teach all of God's children, uh, encouraging Christian growth and maturity in them? If so, say we do. Will you continually remember this commitment in your prayers so that you may allow the Holy Spirit to lead you concerning the needs of your children? If so, say, we will with the help of God. And congregation, these people have accepted a calling from the Lord to spread the good news of God's salvation through teaching. Will you remember them in your prayers and will you lend your support and encouragement to them at all times? Congregation, if so, say, we will with the help of God. Let us pray. Children, let us pray. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Most gracious God, you have blessed your church with many gifted and talented people. We thank you now for these teachers and helpers who have dedicated themselves in service to you. May their words be your words. May their hands be your hands. May their hearts be your heart of love. Give them insight, patience, and that creative spark of your spirit so that your church will be equipped to make disciples of all nations. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Anything else? Then teachers and helpers, thank you so much. Let's thank them for their service. And you guys can go back to your seats. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Kids can go back can to your back seats. To your seat. Bring your backpacks, bring your keychains, bring your brothers. Savannah, here, kiddo. There you go. Oh, sorry. Right in the way. Excuse me. <clears throat> for any of you curious, there were 46 up at the front here for the kids' message. That might be a record. I don't know. Uh, so now we'll hear the word of the Lord in just a minute after <laughs> we'll let them get their seats first. <laughs> um, I'd love for you to pay uh, particular attention to the James reading this morning. Um, that will be included in my sermon as well as the gospel. Our first reading is taken from Isaiah 
chapter 35, verses 4 through 7. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance. With divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where the jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. Our second reading is taken from James chapter 2, verses 1 through 10 and 14 through 17. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing the fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you must stand there or sit on, sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really Keep the royal law found in the scriptures, love your neighbors as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds. Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the gospel acclamation if that's comfortable for you. Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as he heard, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, 
Born in Syrian Phoenicia, she begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the little children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After Jesus took him aside away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated. I want to remind you of a few uh, brief points from our reading from James. In verse 1, it says, My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus must not show favoritism. And a paraphrase of the rest of that reading is this. Do not save the best seat for the rich while leaving the poor to stand or sit on the floor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Faith itself begs to be accompanied by deeds. And then in our gospel reading from Mark, there are two stories of healing very different from one another. In the first story, a woman falls at Jesus' feet. James would want you to notice that uh, she is not given a seat. And she falls at his feet and begs to have the demon driven out of her daughter. And Jesus responds confusingly, rudely even, essentially calling her a dog. But she persists, insisting that even dogs get to eat crumbs. And with this, Jesus heals her daughter. What a weird story, right? It's very different than what I think of as like the classic Jesus healing, which is what we see in verses 31 through 37. There are friends who see their friend with a need, and they think someone needs to be healed, and they bring him to Jesus, and Jesus feels such compassion. Jesus lays hands on them and looks to heaven and speaks, and voila, healed. Classic Jesus healing, right? So I'm very challenged by this text with how Jesus treats this Syrian Phoenician woman. It is perplexing how he seems to be rude to her, especially in contrast to the following healing. And the best answer that I can give to you, based on the best answer of many biblical scholars that I have looked to for wisdom, is that Jesus is fully human at the same time as he is fully God. And in this moment, his human, crabby, tired side takes over. You see, Jesus has been doing a lot of ministry. He has been traveling all over and word has spread and people are following him. He is desperately trying to get away from the crowds. He went to the, to the region of Tyre, which for context is a Gentile region. So it wouldn't be a spot you would expect people of faith to be like following Jesus and like fangirling after him. He was going here to hope for some quiet 
to get a break because he's tired. And yet, even here in this Gentile city, people figured out that he's here and are surrounding him in the place he is trying to get some rest. So we remember he is fully human. And the human part of him at this moment is exhausted and needs a break. Now, I don't know about you, but when I am tired and overstimulated and just need a break, everyone to leave me alone for like five minutes, I get pretty short-tempered. And I am much more likely to snap at someone for just something small and reasonable, looking at me the wrong way, much less asking for something that requires my work. And this is what Jesus seems to do here. He's been healing and teaching and casting out demons and performing miracles for everyone he encounters, rich and poor, Gentile and Jew, insider and outsider. And yet this, for this one particular woman, she happens to ask at a moment when Jesus is at his worst and his human side takes over and he snaps at her. But she persists. She has heard the stories that he is good and powerful and loving and kind. And so she speaks for herself and her daughter and in doing so reminds Jesus that there is more to him than that crabby human side. And so I believe in that moment the divine part of him responds with mercy and power and healing. The reading from James reminds us of the call to set aside the crabby and tired human part of ourselves that want to label some people as less than. And the reading from Mark reminds us that too often in our world, it is the people with disabilities who get the crabby, unloving responses from people who are too tired to fight the status quo. When I was at Gustavus, there was one student at the whole school who used a wheelchair. Although he could get shorter distances uh, using crutches that he carried around with him on the back of his chair. We're gonna call him Mike in this story. Mike was two years younger than me, so we only overlapped for two years at Gustavus, but Mike was also very involved in all of the chapel events, which I was as well, shocking, I know. So we ran into each other frequently. One of the chapel events that we both attended regularly was the special evening worship services. Things like hold an evening prayer or um, a Taizé worship service or other 9 p.m. services with candles and soft music. My strongest memory of Mike in the chapel was one such evening service when we had Holy Communion. And the student who had planned the worship service was planning for everyone to come and gather around the altar to have communion, which is such a cool experience, like to have, because it's always a small group and there's candles and it's, you know, soft lighting and it just feels very holy to be gathered around the altar. I was excited about this, but the thing was, In the Gustavus Chapel, there are five stairs to get up to the level of the altar. No railings, no ramps, no way for a guy who uses crutches or a wheelchair to get there. I noticed this as people are walking forward for communion, um, walking up the steps and Mike is standing at the bottom and I remember feeling kind of trapped, like wanting to stay here by him but also wanting to be in this part of this group and I kind of like walked up one or two stairs and was like maybe I'll just stay here and then by the time I turned around, Mike was walking back down the long aisle by himself. The clang of that heavy door as he left the chapel while the rest of us stood around the altar table, that clang still echoes in my heart as it did across that empty room. Mike did not need healing in his body that night. What he needed was to feel like an included and worthwhile part of that worshiping community. 
And those five steps and the unwillingness of those of us participating to change our awesome plan shouted at him loud and clear that he shouldn't take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Jesus calls us to heal what is broken in our world. And when we spend time with people who have disabilities or physical struggles, the healing they need isn't always in their bodies. No matter who someone is and what their body is like, we all need the healing of feeling welcomed and fully part of a community just as we are. And this is what Jesus does in so many of his healing stories. Yes, he might heal bodies at times, but often before he does that, he offers them a word of forgiveness and welcome into the community. Today, I invite you to consider the people you encounter in your own life, at work or school or in the community or here at church. Who might need the healing of welcome? Who needs to be given a seat when they've only ever been relegated to side doors and back rows? Who is yearning to belong? That we can share Jesus' love with a simple invitation and a small change. There are people in our world who know that they might be blind or low vision, that they will never see, but they still want the freedom of exploring the world and being part of it. There are people who know they will always need mobility aids like wheelchairs or canes or crutches, and they still want to be able to participate in worship and school and life without being cast to the back entrance or being carried up a flight of stairs. People want to feel welcome in the world, even with a chronic illness or a mental illness or unique needs that others can't always see or understand. And as a side note, The disability community is often very vocal about wanting accommodations for their needs, but they also often note that what benefits them as a disabled community is often a benefit to everyone. A ramp that's helpful for a wheelchair user is also helpful to a parent with a stroller or a custodian with a cart. Documents in large print are helpful for those with low vision, those who forget their glasses, students who are learning how to read. A rising tide lifts all boats, so to speak. So I wonder how many times in our lives we have reacted like Jesus when he was tired and crabby. When we've had the chance to welcome someone like Mike to our communion table, but failed to consider the five steps that kept him from the Lord's Supper. We have certainly all failed at some point in our lives to offer the healing of welcome. But today, we can gather here and set that failure at the feet of Jesus on the cross. We are renewed. We gathered together beginning with a promise of forgiveness. We gather around font and table knowing in the promise of new life. And so we can go into the world with Jesus' eyes looking not for people who are broken and need to be fixed, but looking for people who are standing at the bottom of the steps, yearning to be part of the community just out of reach above them. Jesus goes and heals, and in doing so calls us to go and heal too, to remove barriers and extend a welcome to all of God's children. So go into the world from this place to offer a welcome seat at the table for all of God's people. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Healer of Our Every Ill, number 612. 612.
I invite the congregation to stand for the prayers. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, all of God's creation, and those in need. Lord God, awaken in our communities of faith a spirit of radical hospitality. Encourage our churches to celebrate and embrace people of diverse backgrounds, experiences, and abilities. And live in our Sunday school, our youth and children's programs, deepen our commitment to ecumenical partnerships in town and beyond. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bring forth water to nourish plants and animals in places suffering from drought. Renew our commitments to protect rivers, lakes, and streams, and make us good stewards of water in our homes and communities. Preserve wetland habitats and the creatures that make their homes there. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, inspire leaders of cities and nations, tribes, to lead with wisdom and humility. Bring peace among people in conflict and strengthen global commitments to nonviolent solutions. Guide all who seek refuge from war to a safe haven. Bring an end to the war and violence in the Middle East and elsewhere. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort all who live with chronic illness. Surround them in your tender embrace and sustain all who provide ongoing care and support to them. Bring hope and healing to people struggling with addiction. Nourish uh, the spirits of all those who are in recovery. Tend to those who are close to our hearts, especially Frank, Claire Baum, Kayla, Jada Bernau, Samantha Stewart, Betty Narvison. We pray for those in care centers and those who are homebound, those serving in the military. We pray for Wendy Warden and for all those whose names are upon our hearts in this time of silence. Lord, in your mercy, we entrust these and all of our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please be seated. And that's a segue into our first announcement this morning, as we're going to take a break from uh, extending the peace to everybody uh, with germs being passed around and concerns of COVID and beyond, uh, we will uh, refrain and come back another time uh, with our sharing of the peace. Other announcements. So great to have so many of you here today. Uh, Sunday school hour, like I said earlier, is filled with activities and games. They're blowing up the bounce houses as we speak out in the grassy area. Um, so again, we'll meet here, parents and kids and Sunday school teachers and helpers, uh, right at 9.05 uh, at, after 10, 15 minutes or so. Then we'll have 30, 35 minutes of fun out there in the outdoors. Uh, children and youth programs are beginning this week. For example, Wednesday we have GPS, our uh, after-school 5th and 6th grade program. Do we have a bus number yet? Bus number 3 for 5th and 6th graders at the school, they'll be dropped off very close here to the church parking lot. And that goes until 4.30, second I'll, and fourth Sundays. I'll be at the bus where you get off. It's basically, you get off at my house, and I will be there. Um, so fifth, fifth and sixth graders can take bus three, and then we'll walk together over to the church, um, and then that finishes at 4.30. Great, thank you. Eighth and ninth grade confirmation begins Wednesday night, supper at 6. 6.28 is when the classes start. Seventh grade group also meets. First few minutes with the parents at 6.30 here. And then seventh graders will uh, enjoy some activities and a lesson after that. The parents are welcome to stay if they want to. The parents are welcome to stay. All right. Eighth, and ninth, eighth through twelfth grade, fifth quarter lock-in. I'm saving up my sleep for that now. That'll be 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. Sign-up list is on the youth room door. Bell Choir begins Wednesday night at 5.30. We always need some more ringers, so if you haven't tried it before, come on down. We'll meet in the back of the sanctuary Wednesday night. Esther Circle meets on the regular third Tuesday of this month. I believe the newsletter calendar said it's meeting on Tuesday, but no, it meets on the 17th instead. 
Many other announcements are there. I invite you to read all of them in your bulletin. Are there any others I should mention at this time? If not, we'll go into our offering. Thank you uh, for what you give to the ministries of this church inside and also beyond. Thank you. Kids can come on up for the noisy offering if you'd like. There you go. Let's stand again and sing. Let us pray. Gracious God, so many lives here today, from the young to the old and everywhere in between, we are all children of God, and we thank you, Lord, for putting us here on this earth for a purpose and for your pleasure, and part of that is giving of ourselves. Thank you for that opportunity now and all week long. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's sing our sending hymn to be your presence.
So a thing that happens when pastors don't look at their bulletins is we forget to do things that are in the bulletin, such as the Lord's Prayer. So we're going to do that now. Uh, Thank you for being on that screen. So gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.